Linux is often called the backbone of the internet. It's an open source, highly customizable OS. Some people may find Linux intimidating to try out because it's not like you can go to the Linux store and buy the latest version. Hi, I'd like the Linux, please. Of course, Matt, which version of Linux? It's not like with Windows, where one company like Microsoft puts together the operating system and sells it to you in a neat, standardized package. Linux is open source software, and there are many groups that put together countless versions of this software. Here are just some of these versions, otherwise known as distros or distributions. Distributions combine the Linux kernel, the terminal, a graphical desktop, app management system, and many other components to build a completely installable OS. There are many ways to combine these elements, and different groups add their own finishing touches, optimizing for different use cases. You could even put the elements together yourself and create your own distro if you had the inclination and patience. But using a ready-made distro makes installation and updates much easier. It makes sense that someone might look at all these options and feel overwhelmed. There are definitely more distros than we can cover, but in our last video, we gave our audience an introduction to Linux by focusing on five popular distros. Distributions. I was happy to see many people respond to that video with their favorite distribution and wonder why we didn't mention it. We see you, Arch and Fedora users. In this video, we're going to dive into one of the most highly recommended Linux distros for beginners, Ubuntu, and show you how to install it onto your high drive if you're ready to take the plunge. Ubuntu is a great way to get started and try out Linux for the first time. But let's start by recapping some reasons why you might want to try Linux in the first place. Security is one. If you need a really secure environment for the work that you do, for example, if you're a journalist, activist, whistleblower, there are some Linux distros that optimize for this and would be a great fit for you. Another reason is you might just be tired of sending all your data to Microsoft Microsoft and Apple, and would prefer a system where you're more in control of how much data you share. There are many Linux distros that might work for you. If you're a corporation looking for safe, effective, money-saving alternatives to running Windows or Mac, there are options for you too. Or maybe you're just into gaming and technology, or want to be able to control and customize your own setup. Linux is like making your own burger, where you can customize everything from the patty, the bun, the condiments, and the sauces to create a setup that's exactly how you want it. But if you're just getting started, you'll want something easy to use with a similar feel to the OS's you've used before, and you'll want support to be as easy to find as possible. There are plenty of Linux distros that tick those boxes, including one of the easiest, Ubuntu. So let's get started. Ubuntu is widely known for its user-friendly interface. It's easy to run and easy to learn how to modify and customize it. And installation is very simple too, compared with some other distros that might scare a beginner off. One thing about Linux that also scares first-time users away is using the command line. But if you're not ready for that yet, Ubuntu offers a familiar graphics interface that's quite welcoming for newbies. And another thing that might be daunting for new users is the commitment of wiping your machine in order to install a new operating system. System. Ubuntu really helped Linux go mainstream by allowing people to try it out without having to ditch their current setup. They widely distributed bootable Ubuntu Live CDs that allowed people to try out the OS while leaving your existing operating system in place. Today, you can do a similar thing by creating a bootable Live USB stick and running the OS from there instead of installing it on your hard drive. A bootable Live USB stick can also be useful if you're traveling and you don't want to bring your computer around. You can load up your own desktop that you're familiar with on almost any computer. Let's talk about releases, meaning when new versions of the OS become available. The main recommended release versions of Ubuntu are called Long-Term Support or LTS Editions, which are released every two years. They're considered more stable and more predictable for third-party app developers who can, in theory, code their product to perfectly fit that LTS release. These LTS releases each receive five years of free maintenance updates from Canonical, the company that supports Ubuntu, and there are also paid options to receive extended security maintenance up to 10 years. Software needs constant maintenance, where things are updated in order to fix bugs and improve performance. Knowing that your version of the software will continue to receive these security and maintenance updates for a long period of time can be helpful, especially for anyone looking for a long-term system that will remain secure and isn't going to break down. It makes Ubuntu sufficiently sturdy to operate on servers, where maintaining uptime and 
performance are crucial. Besides the LTS releases, there are also interim releases every six months. These are where new features and capabilities are introduced, and these releases serve as a proving ground for whether or not certain features will be included in an LTS release. While they're considered stable enough to be used for daily use, these interim releases only receive support from Canonical for nine months. So we recommend that most users stay on the LTS releases unless they really want to try the latest Ubuntu features. In fact, it's estimated that 95% of all Ubuntu installations are LTS releases. Ubuntu has a great out-of-the-box experience and not only automatically installs most of the drivers that you need for a wide variety of hardware, but it also comes pre-installed with many useful apps, such as the Firefox web browser, Browser, Thunderbird email client, a movie player, and the LibreOffice suite. Drivers and apps tend to be kept updated to their latest versions when compared to other distros such as Debian, which place a bigger focus on stability. This advantage also extends to proprietary apps and drivers such as Steam, Proton, and NVIDIA display drivers. These have all been tested specifically to work well with Ubuntu. Ubuntu also offers an easy way to install new apps through the Ubuntu Software Center, which works similarly to Apple's and Microsoft's app stores. It allows you to download, install, and update apps from a single dashboard. Because it's such a popular distribution, you'll find a lot of help online for any issue you may have, which you can find with general internet searches, community forums such as Ask Ubuntu, or even Ubuntu's own very detailed official documentation. Lastly, Ubuntu's default GNOME interface is intuitive and snappy, even if you're coming from Windows or Mac. You can even use various Ubuntu flavors, which have different desktop experiences with their own set of default app bundles and settings that cater to different use cases. These are maintained by community members, but still enjoy the updates and backend of Ubuntu. So if you've tried out Ubuntu and you're ready to install it on your machine, here's how you do it. Most modern Windows computers will do fine. Modern Mac computers with M1 and M2 chips don't support Ubuntu natively yet, but you can run it as a virtual machine, which we're not going to go into in this episode. Before you begin, three important notes. First, Running Linux is not the same as running Mac or Windows, where there's more support for specific programs. So before taking the plunge, make sure that Linux is right for you. Personally, there's certain software that I still use on my old computer and have started using Linux for everything else. You may be in a similar boat, depending on what you need your computer for. But for many people, most of their work is done in the browser, so Ubuntu will work great. Second, this installation process will completely erase all files from your computer. Make sure you back up everything important to you before you begin. Finally, it's helpful to have a second internet connected device with you during installation so that you can use it to troubleshoot. If all goes according to plan, the process should take about 35 minutes from start to finish, depending on your setup. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is download the Ubuntu disk image from the official Ubuntu website. A disk image is a computer file containing the contents and structure of a disk volume or an entire data storage device. In this case, it will be an Ubuntu disk image that perfectly replicates the structure and contents of the Ubuntu workspace. Once you download the Ubuntu disk image, save it to an easy to find location on your machine. Next, you'll need to create a bootable USB stick and you'll write the file that you just downloaded to your USB stick to use in the installation process. It's not as simple as just copying and pasting the file to your USB. You'll need to use certain software to do it, like Belena Etcher, but Belena Etcher makes the process super easy. Choose the version of Belena Etcher that corresponds to your current OS and install it onto your computer. Computer. Open the program and follow the prompts. You'll select your downloaded Ubuntu file, choose your USB flash driver's location, and then click Flash to install your image. Now we're going to boot from the flash drive. Leave your USB in the computer and restart your machine. On most machines, it will automatically recognize and begin the installation process. But if that's not the case, try holding F12 right as you boot up your machine and select the USB drive to boot from. You'll see the welcome screen inviting you to either try or install Ubuntu. To proceed, click Install Ubuntu. You'll be asked to select your keyboard layout. The next screen will ask you to choose between normal installation or minimal installation. Choose Normal. In the Other Options section, you'll be prompted to download updates as well as third-party software that may improve device support and performance. For example, NVIDIA graphics drivers. Check both these boxes. Now connect to the internet. Using an Ethernet cable directly into your computer is going to be the best option. The next step is to configure your installation. It is possible to enable dual boot on your computer where you can have both your old OS and Ubuntu installed. 
For this video, we're choosing to have Ubuntu be the only OS on our machine. Select Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. This process will reformat your hard drive and all previous data will be lost. Now you'll have an option to enable disk encryption, which you can get to under Advanced Features. This is highly recommended. Click Install Now. You'll be asked to create a security key. Do not lose this security key as it's used to decrypt the data on your machine. Write it down and store it in a safe place. There is no way to recover it or change it if it's lost. Choose your geographic location and time zone if you'd like. If you're connected to the internet, this will be automatically detected. You'll be asked to type your name, the name of your computer as you would like it to appear on the network, your username and your password. Be sure to choose a strong password. We recommend you opt for manual login rather than to be logged in automatically. It's more secure and also minor inconsistencies can happen if you choose auto login with disk encryption enabled. Then just wait for the installation process to complete on its own. You'll get a slideshow giving you beginner's tips and suggestions. And once the installation has completed, follow the prompt to restart your machine. Then remove the USB stick. Once the computer has restarted, enter your password. And voila, you now have a brand new Ubuntu machine. A couple more things you'll want to configure, which will be guided through by the welcome widget. Configure Live Patch to automatically apply updates to your device, but this option is only available when using a long-term support version of Ubuntu. Download any additional apps you require from Ubuntu software. Right after the connecting your online account screen, Ubuntu asks if you'd like to help improve Ubuntu and share certain details about your system and your location with Canonical. We recommend clicking no, don't send system info. And finally, don't forget to update. To allow Ubuntu to update regularly, click on the grid button, the icon with nine dots in the bottom left corner of your window and search for software updater. That's it, you can now have a play around. Taking control of your machine via a Linux distro is liberating, but it's also intimidating. Ubuntu makes the jump less scary. If you're using Ubuntu, let us know how you like it, or tell us which distro is your favorite that you think people should know about. At the end of the day, you have to pick an OS that works for you, but you'll find that in the world of Linux, there are many options to choose from.